Let me take you back 1994. That was the year I left school. And I remember being a 15, 16 year old kid and, you know, probably not really knowing what was going on in life. Just all I knew was I was a massive music fan. All of a sudden, this band came from down the road in Burnage called Oasis, brought out an album called Definitely Maybe that is probably one of the most life changing moments for me and my mates and anyone my age, really. It was a massive, massive thing, you know, not just for music, for all lads our age. And, you know, they're still changing people's lives. Now, that band was formed in Burnage, in Manchester. And um, I've got the fella in the studio with me who was an integral part of getting that band together. His name's Paul Ashby, known to us as Big and he's just brought a book out called Giving It The Big and And it is an absolute pleasure that that man is facing me in the studio now. How are you, mate? Good evening, yeah, I'm good, pal. Good. How are you doing? You're right. Can I just sort your yeah, mic out there, silly, Laura. Mate. It's uh, it's annoying me face. There we go. We'll just get that oh, right. Hang on, what's that? Look, ah, oh, that's <laughs> it. I can hear you now. Wrecking the place. Nice one. How you doing, mate? You're right, yeah. Yeah, I'm good, Dave. I'm good. Listen, cheers for coming down, taking the time out to join us today. You've got this book out. It's called "Giving It the Big and Oasis Manchester Football and Me." I'm going to try it as quick as we can and talk about as much as that as we possibly can because your life, you're known for the Oasis story, but mm-hmm. there's much more to it than that. Yeah. Let me. Ask Asked you first of all, the first thing I want to ask you: your book, giving it the big one. Why now? Uh, well, it should have been out last year. I've been working on it for probably five years, and for whatever reasons, it never worked out with certain writers. And I wasn't happy with how it was being written. Uh, it's quite a difficult story, as you can probably guess. Is that many stories in there, and it all has to sort of knit together. Um, but, well, initially, Tony McCarroll's book, he, he written No Ace is the Truth, and it come from that. I was asked, I never actually thought I was going to write a book, but come, you know, back of No Ace is the Truth, I got, I got the book out, so... I remember you mentioning this book to me quite a, a way back at a football match somewhere or something. Now, this book, obviously, it's, it's a great, great book. It's out now, but I dare say it only touches the surface of, of what went on. How, yeah. how truthful is this book? Well, it could. I, I could have put so much more in it, but you've got to be careful, do you know what I mean? I, I, I've kept it positive, as truthful as I can. Um, I don't know. I, like I say, there could have been so much more. I am not entirely... Hundred percent happy with it personally. Do you know what I mean? It's a great read, but like I say, it, there could have been so much more. But I had to be careful. Is there room for a second edition? Possibly. Yeah, there could be. Giving yeah. it the bigger, bigger. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Take us back for those that don't know the story of you. Where's your involvement with Oasis? Then, well, it's going back to probably what ninety ninety one. Uh, I met Liam, a friend of mine, Steve Shenton's. He was playing snooker. I heard this little rowdy kid shouting his mouth off. Went in, instantly clicked with him. Um, I think three days later, I offered him a job doing the valeting. Um, we, about three days later, we went down to Man United, got in the cliff, got into United, doing all their cars. And uh, yes, went from there, telling me he wanted to be a rock star. And yeah, away we went. And obviously, you knew Bonehead then, and that's where the link came in there. Yeah. Yeah, grew up with Bonehead. That was interesting time. But always fascinated with Bonehead. Could play anything. Play spoons, play anything bone. Always doing something with an instrument. When I talk to people about you, and like I said, I've known you a few years now, you know, it, it's kind of like when you got Liam Gallagher and Bonehead together, mm. could you imagine what was going to happen next? Uh, no, obviously not. I mean,. I don't know, it, at that point, it, it, there was something happening in Manchester. And I just, I don't know, it, it, it was coming. It had to come. I always felt like down our end, something was going to happen. I felt it. And when I first met Liam, I, I don't know, he had something about him. Obviously, he had a cool haircut and that, didn't he? So, and he was cheeky and that. But, no, it was, I don't know. But when the band, when they, when they initially got together... It, it, it just, I don't know, something clicked, you know what I mean? It, it, something happened and then the belief started coming into the band and then it just happened, didn't it? It was, it was crazy. It was, I don't know. For me, I be. remember, I remember like, and I just, when I introduced you then, it was kind of like, you know, all of a sudden for a 15, 16 year old kid, which, which is what I was into music, all of a sudden there's a band who looked like you, sounded like mm. you, dressed like you, walked like you, talked like you. It was, they were the biggest thing in the world and, you know, it was, 
It was massive. You were a big part of them in the early days, you know, and I think anyone who knows anything about Oasis knows about you. Yeah. I would love to do a full two-hour show with you. We can't, unfortunately. Oh, well, yeah. Moving forward, I'm going to talk more about your book in a minute. When the band split up, mm-hmm. how did that make you feel after what I did been through and, you know, your involvement? How did you feel? Yeah, it was sad, wasn't it? But I think it was it was coming. You know, all them years on the road, what, 25 years, was it? 20 yeah, years, 20 yeah. years, whatever. It's a long time, two brothers, you know what I mean? And I don't know. I mean, people talk about the relationship and that was always there. I've said it before, you know, Liam and Noel always thought, you know, there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into it. I've got my own view on it, but it's a bit personal, so I'm not going to go into it. But it, it was always there and, you know, 25 years, 20 years, it's a long time as brothers on the road, you know, went through a lot together, didn't they? And, I don't know, it's sad. It's but... almost like a marriage, in it? You know what I well, mean? Well, yeah. You know, that, that long and living together and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I know that a lot of these interviews you'll be doing, you, you'll get asked about them getting back together. I don't want to know that. I want to know about your book. I know, as a friend of yours for the last few years, this book isn't just about Oasis, it's also about Manchester and yeah. football. I know you through Football Connection and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, this book you brought out, how much does it go into football? Yeah, because it was a big part of my life. Obviously, through the Valley, and got to know a lot of players, didn't I? Um, I don't know, it's, you know, you've got, obviously, my adventures with Beckham doing his cars, funny stories, Mario Balotelli, King Cladzi, who's obviously a really good friend of mine. Uh, all positive, funny. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, good. It's cool. You've done this book. Have you come across any obstacles while you've been doing it? Has anybody kind of like said, right, don't be putting this in, don't be putting that in? Yeah, I've had a few bits and pieces, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, uh, Proper eyes rolled then, like, yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I said, there could have been so much more in it, and it is what it is. But, yeah, it's good. It's getting great feedback, getting good reviews, so... Yeah, three days. The feedback you've had for it is absolutely amazing. I mean, I've scanned through it. I've not had a chance to read it properly yet, but I will be doing it. I remember a few years ago you mentioned, you know, the idea of doing this book. And uh, for anyone who's not just a music fan or, or a football fan, it's just it's a great, great read. Giving it the big one, Oasis Manchester Football and Me by Paul Ashby. Uh, the feedback's been absolutely amazing. Um, availability, where can people get this book from? Well, that's another problem. I mean, it's running out of bloody, well, selling out in it. Amazon, I think, at the minute, saying one available, which isn't cool. Uh, Waterstones, but unfortunately, it's like 15 quid in there, so... But there'll be more in this week, so, yeah, it's there. You can get it. I think Wordry, it's actually on... i seen it on uh, eBay today for 27 quid. Someone's <laughs> trying to make money out of me already. Well, you've signed this one, so I'm going to put it on for 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, seriously, it is going to be a great, great book. And like I say, whether you're a music fan, football fan, Manchester fan, it is well worth getting it. This man has got a lot of history behind him. Well respected. Oh, giving it the big one, Oasis Manchester Football and me. And if you want to meet him, uh, I just if you don't mind me, I'll just mention this as well. You're actually doing a DJ set at the evening with Sean Ryder uh, at the Breadshed at in the Manchester. Breadshed, yeah. That'll be a good night, won't yeah, it? Yeah, it should be decent, man. Uh, Jade Assembler playing live, an evening with Sean Ryder and big one, uh, doing a DJ set. Not that I can DJ, all right, but... <laughs> you're not meant to admit that. You're not meant to admit that. I just stand there, like, do you know what I mean? Look like I'm doing something. Uh, that's at the bread shed on Saturday, the twenty second of December. So get down there for that. Uh, but uh, do you know what? I, I want to say to you, good luck with the book. You don't need it. No. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's uh, buying I mean, it. It is what it is. I mean, I, I like I said, I never expected to write a book. So when it came along, I thought I thought long and hard, and then away I went. And like I said, really difficult. I'd never, like I said, I couldn't do it again. I, I don't think I could. Do it. It's just done my head in that. I'm so looking I'll at put you. Well, a lot of time into that as well. So I'm please. looking at you while you're saying that, but I'm thinking there's so many more stories in that. <laughs> yeah, head. there is, there is. But I've, you know, you've got to be careful, man. It's that upsetting people, and I don't like that. I've got to walk the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Giving it the big one by Paul Biggin Ashby uh, is out now, and like I say, I mean. I'm not a book reviewer, but get it. it mm. You know, really, really good book. And I'm sure there'll be a load, a lot of truthful and funny stories in there as well. But listen, yeah. big and cheers for taking yeah, the time nice to join Dave. us today, man. And uh, catch up soon, yeah? Yeah, top man. Paul Ashby, big and giving it the big and out now. Get it.